one of the challenges that we are facing as a nation is child labor and trafficking, especially in the fishing communities. We believe strongly that the future of the nation or the backbone of the nation is dependent on the children and the youth. So if the children do not have an education and access to good health now, then it means the future of our nation, Ghana, is at risk. Child labor and trafficking is a situation where children are being used for labor or hard labor. Unfortunately, when the children are being taken, they are giving, their parents are being given some amount of money as a form of child slavery. And the children will promise them that, oh, we'll take you to Yeji for about a year. But you end up staying for five years, 10 years, seven for a fisherman. Some of the problems that these children face as a result of being involved in child labor is that they don't have access to go to school. And also because um, they are all mostly on the sea, they don't have access to good food. Neither do they have access to good health services. Some of the children, as a result of also um, fishing, get drowned in the sea because they have to go and disentangle fishing nets. And recently we also heard that some of the children are being used for rituals, where uh, they believe that when children are being killed for the rituals, they get more fishes. When children begin to face these challenges, it doesn't give them the opportunity to also live to their dreams, to become the future leaders that can build a strong civil society that we expect. One other thing that I would like to talk about is that when, especially girls, who are also being trafficked or involved in this fishing activity, which is like selling of the fishes, do experience a lot of sexual harassment leading to teenage pregnancies. A lot more young girls are giving birth in these fishing communities. The men are not taking responsibility of them, and so they have more children that they can take good care of. And when it happens that way, the only option they can have is to sell their children to the other fishermen. I love Ghana, oh, 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 oh. I love Ghana, oh, 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 oh. I love Ghana, oh, 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 oh. My country, Ghana. I love, I love, I love. My country, Ghana, oh, 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 oh. I love Ghana, oh, yeah. My name is Eric Opokwajiman, the founder and executive director of Cheerful Hearts Foundation, Kasoa, Ghana. As I try to recall them, ECG do them, and do them sweet. How I love my country. One other thing that I experienced growing up as a child, I remember my father died in 93. And before he died, the life was better. When he died, his family took over his business and they abandoned us. We didn't have any inheritance from our father's property. And because of that, we became poor overnight. Life became very difficult. It got to a point that we had to sell water even on the street before we can make money to go to school. Look at me, just presenting you, seed mother. Seed mother, I know gonna forget you. For this summer way you suffer for me. Sweet mother, I know gonna forget you. For this summer way you suffer for me. I remember in 2005, I had my national service in the eastern region. I met Bright Fiachi. 
who became a very good friend because we were all playing the musical instrument together. I was working in a school and Bright was working with the district health management team. When we met up, I realized that Bright also faced a similar challenge growing up. Our scholarship program is not able to take care of all, the, all of these children. So it feels like we need to strategize and know what categories are we going to put in place mm -hmm. to select the ones that are most vulnerable. There are some very poor kids in his school that he was uh, taking care of. They are very brilliant, very, but very poor. They cannot make their school fees and all those things. So we decided that uh, why don't we put resources together and help them. And so Bright and I began to think that we have similar passion. We have similar dreams of giving back to society or letting society know that there is the need to support children and especially children's education so that we can all realize a better future. So in 2005, 2006, we were all thinking about how can we make this happen? So we came up with an idea. Okay, why not register an organization and more people can get to hear about our passion and can also contribute to it. And we can support a lot more children. So that is the time that we had a lot of um, stories about child labor issues happening in the fishing communities around Kaswa. We started Chefwai Foundation in 2008 with the main goal to protect the rights of children. Currently, through our work, we've been able to assist over 300 children to be able to go to school. But we have given scholarship to 47 of these children who we pay for their school fees. The main problem is also to be able to change the perception of the people, to be able to appreciate that education in the long term can actually help to break their cycle of poverty. Because we don't want to come to the community and be like, hey, what you are doing is wrong. You don't do it like that, no. Because they need the kids. And some of them also think that it's a profession they are teaching the kids. This is what they have grown to know. And this is what they are doing to make a living. We also try to explain to them, to understand, what benefits they can get from the children in future if they actually go to school, as opposed to what they are doing in the fishing community. I am Ivan Rejesi. I am 20 years old. I used to help my father in the fishing. Sometimes I have to move out of classroom for more than two days. Due to this, I missed a lot of um, important lessons in the classroom. This continues for a very long time. Sometimes I get very tired before I get money to go to school. And then due to this, my performance became very low. You want it to be a doctor, isn't it? Yeah, so you have to make sure that the grades are perfect because there's going to be a lot of competition. And he's a very brilliant child. He tops his class even though he doesn't get the time to go to school. So the teacher in the school came to us and then we followed up. And we saw what he was doing. We interviewed the child and it was very tiring. Because of that, sometimes he's very tired. Even when he comes to school, he's sleeping. The parents were not also supportive. They didn't really understand why we want to take their child to school because the child helps them. He goes to fishing, at least he gets money, brings to the house for the domestic needs. So we have to do a lot of counseling, a lot of talking to them. One day I was in the school when um, Chef Watt Foundation came to question me about how I do in the school. They encouraged me to go to school. They offered to pay my school fees for me and then they bought some books for me in order to stay focused in my studies. So as a result of this, I became 
punctual in the school. I go to school with or without food because I know my school fees have been paid for me. The education certificate examination, I passed and then gain admission to the senior high school, St. Augustine's College, which is one of the best schools in Ghana. I'm now offering general science in that school because I want to become a medical doctor in order to help promote the health system of my community. Currently, we have a skilled training program. We train 24 girls on different skilled programs such as beads making, decoration, and also uh, painting and arts. Other girls are also doing music and dance. This program is something that was suggested through our interviews with the girls within the schools because they realize that sometimes when they finish junior high school or senior high schools, they are not able to further to the university level. So it is a way of gaining something extra which could be used as a vocation or as a profession. Through the school training center, we are also able to have a rehabilitation program attached to it. The rehabilitation program is basically to prepare children that have been involved in child labor, to prepare them academically before they enter into the mainstream school program. Because a lot of the time when the children are being involved in child labor or being trafficked, they are traumatized. What we do is we help children with learning disabilities and attention issues. We are also looking Another area of intervention that we are using to help reduce this uh, child labor and trafficking issues is by training teachers on learning disabilities and how they can be managed so that they can take very good care of the children or create an environment that can help the children to stay in school. So when you have some people like that in your, in your class, you need to pay more attention to them. You know kids like sports a lot, where we get football class from all the schools in the community to come and compete. And then we encourage our rescue children to be part of those teams and those activities. When children hear of these things, it's fun to them. So most of them would like to be enrolled in school and be in school and be involved in those activities. Another thing that we are also doing to stop the child labor and trafficking in our fishing communities is also through the training of community volunteers. Volunteers between the ages of um, 13 to 25 years, which includes students and teachers, are trained on to correct problems within your own communities. And these volunteers are being trained for a period of five days. After being trained, they will go house to house within 
the communities to be able to also educate households on how important it is for their children to be able to go to school. If the volunteers are able to educate members, it will help more children to be able to go to school. A typical example is in 2014. We trained 20 volunteers from the Yenyan fishing community and they went house to house to educate community members. After eight years of pilot study, we had 315 children going back to school. When we go to the community now, we are going to talk to them as we have learned from the fellowship. Okay, so you see how they are sitting. We are not going to judge. So when you go, whatever they are doing, if it's a boat they are sitting on, you sit. And we know the usual thing. When you go, you greet the people, okay? And you tell them the reason why you are here. My name is Sam Okakraba. I'm, I'm 19 years of age. Being a volunteer is to do something for your community. I met um, Beric through our teacher, Saima, uh -huh, through him. He came to our school and they said they were looking for volunteers. So through that, he contacted that teacher. Yeah. Many of my friends work at a fashion show and through that, through the volunteerism, I got to know that this is the importance of education. This is the causes or effects of you being coming to the show to work. So if you get, like education is a long time, like training. Uh, but most of my, my friends will tell me that, I mean, if you come to the show to work today, the money that they're going to gain, I'm not going to anything. So why am I worrying myself to educate? Like, why am I worrying myself to come to school? I just dug down. I said, no, this thing is a seasonal work. This work is like seasonal work. Small time, it's going to cut off. So they should just stop and come, to, come and join me in school. Because if you want to become a prominent person in future, if you are not being educated for even GHS, after the GHS, I'm not supposed to come here. And many of, many of the children, if, you are, being, if you, are, you are training them, they, like, they just laugh at you. But as for my friends, they, like, they were many, but I forced to send three of them to school. I'm most grateful. I'm very happy when I became a volunteer. I used not to have the confidence when speaking to people in public. But through that, like through these projects, I got to know that I, I can try for it and I can do more. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, sir. How are you all? We are fine, thank you. And how are you, sir? We are also very fine, thank you. So uh, this afternoon, we are from Cheerful Hearts Foundation, and we would like to talk to you about malaria. Healthcare. It's a big issue in Ghana, especially because we in a third world country, so we still have some of the health challenges, especially in the area of public health or malaria prevention, hepatitis and maternal health. These are issues that are of a big concern to Ghana. So what we as an organization, we are doing currently, we trained 120 students who went house to house with the nurses to educate community members on what causes cholera and how they can prevent cholera. And that is the reason why we didn't record any cholera case in last year and also this year. And to say, rainy season, we will be called toilet one, two. Another thing that we are doing to help the, the schools or the community is through health screenings. There are a number of health cases such as malaria, cholera, hepatitis, that need to be screened so that people can know their health status. We were able to screen 150 students per three schools. Each school we screened 150, making 450 students who were screened in Yeyano community alone. And with hepatitis screening, we were able to screen over 350 students in the Yeyano community only in last year. Currently in Yeyano, we are operating in 10 schools. In Kaswa community, we've reached over 50 schools already when we started Cheerful Hearts Foundation. And um, what we basically do is, we do not only go there and talk to the students, but we also do follow-ups to be able to check on them to understand if they are really practicing the health topics that we are dealing with. I can confidently say that over half of the population that we've been able to educate on these health issues are able to go back home and also talk to their parents about it. And we see that through the health records that come out 
through the National Health uh, Performance Review that we you attend every year. How to prevent cholera? Mm. To keep, we have to keep our environment clean to reduce. We believe okay. that through education, we can also uh, change the mindset of people within these communities. Our foundation team serves more like a family. We work together as a family rather than a team that looks at, I mean, salary staff. The 26th of April. Started from the scratch by voluntary services. None of us were paid for two years till the organization started getting uh, financial support from individuals and from some organizations and some universities. That's when we were able to actually work full time for the Cheerful Hearts Foundation. And improve from the previous ones that we have done. It has been more of a, a family of people who are more passionate about the health issues, about human rights issues, as children's welfare, and that is why we have come together as a team to be able to move forward. Even though we are very few, we are able to make a lot of impact with the little resources that we have. Resource persons. Working to convince actually children to be able to go to school. It's a challenge, especially children who have been working at the shop for a very long time. They see money every day, little pieces of money every day. And as a child, it seemed to them very big. So trying to train the child or talk to the child that, no, education is important in the very long term is very challenging. One, we use ourselves as role models for the children to know that some of us have been in situations like that. But since we went to school, Today we are in good condition to be able to even give back to the community. We can take care of our families. So we are able to use our lives to challenge them. Another thing is that we work through their families. We visit their families, talk to the parents, to be able to also understand that in the long term or in the future, when you are very old, who takes care of you? You're looking after your children. So the investment you do in your, in your child's life today is the better future you have tomorrow. So we have a, a, a proverb which actually means that if you take care of your child for the teeth to grow, then your child will also take care of you for your teeth to remove. I met Eric and we became friends because we are both lovers of music. And more or less now we are more like a family. He calls me brother, I call him brother. If we don't tell you that he is a friend, you will think that we are blood brothers. Yes, we Bright is a brother to me, so we take decisions together. We, when it's, we are making future plans, we think together. We're looking at a future where we have even our own children who become also brothers and sisters, and generations to come under us will become one people. So that is love and the beauty of the concept of family that I and Bright believe in.
My dream is that we can have a model of school, which is a senior high school, that can help at least over to support about 3,000 children within the central region of Ghana. It should be a model center where children are not only for academics, but will be built for leadership so that they can also become selfless volunteer to support community development needs. One of the things that I'm also looking at for is like a hospital or a health center that will focus more on children and maternal health. We hope to, to become internationally recognized and big because what is happening here is not only in Ghana, it's not only in Nyanya no Senya or Fete, it is in all other African countries and all other countries worldwide. I wouldn't be happy if I stopped child labor and trafficking in this community and somewhere else in the world, the same thing is happening somewhere else. I wouldn't be happy from a heart that, that is genuine to be able to solve the problem worldwide because if we solve the problem here and the problem is somewhere else, we still have the same problem. What I strongly believe is that no single person or not even the richest man on earth has been buried with a car. So all my life, every single thing that I'm doing is, no matter what I get, I want to be able to use the resources that I have to be able to impact society. It could be my knowledge, it could be my wealth, it could be anything that I have. But the most important thing is to be able to make an impact with it before I die. <laughs>